Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we're at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference and I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Gaurav Elawadi, who's the Chairman of Cardiac Surgery at Michigan Medicine in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Gaurav, thanks for being here today. I'm excited to be here, thank you. Yeah, so we have a lot of questions from patients about the tricuspid valve. In the past, it's been referred to as the forgotten valve and you're doing a lot of sharing about research and treatment techniques here at the conference. What can you help our patients learn about the latest updates on the tricuspid valve? Sure, well, first of all, the problem with the tricuspid valve is patients oftentimes don't have symptoms or their symptoms are very subtle, like being fatigued or having some swelling in their legs. And it's not until the heart gets much weaker that they present with more significant symptoms at that time, sometimes it's too late to offer anything. In terms of treating the tricuspid valve, I've heard there might be some sensitivity or concern from a physician's perspective when doing that. Can you share with our patients what might be maybe an incremental risk for treating of the tricuspid valve? So typically the treatment has only been tricuspid valve surgery. Unfortunately, on paper, most patients have a high mortality risk. And it's not because it's hard to get to the tricuspid valve, but rather, it's a sign that the right side of the heart is very weak, which affects the liver, the kidneys, and the other organs. Dr. Elawad, I gotta ask you, why is the risk higher for the tricuspid valve? Uh, it's because the right side of the heart is so much more sensitive. If you think about the left side of the heart, it's like a balloon that you buy from a store. You blow up, and it has immediate recoil when you release it. The right side of the heart, you blow up the balloon, you let it sit in the sun for a week, and you try to release the air, it has no recoil. Well, that's essentially what the right side of the heart or the right ventricle does. It's very sensitive to fluid, and when you have a leaking tricuspid valve, it gets over distended, and it doesn't have the same recoil, it doesn't get back to more normal size, and that ultimately affects the liver and the kidneys and other organs. And I've got to ask you, Dr. Leo, you and I have known each other for a long time. I saw you perform a mitra clip prior to its FDA approval. I got to ask you, I know that you're looking at the innovations of valvular therapy. Are there any new devices that are on the horizon that you're working with or are in clinical trials? So the exciting thing about the, the tricuspid valve, it is quite the opposite in terms of the forgotten valve. There are so many different devices that are being tested. Many are in, in trials to replace the tricuspid valve or repair the tricuspid valve, essentially to try to help these patients that are so ill and frail have a better quality of life. Obviously, there's been a lack of awareness around this disease for a long time. Do you think this is something where patients should be proactive if they've heard they might have a murmur? Maybe the physician doesn't even think about the tricuspid valve that much. What should patients do? Absolutely, the one thing is a lot of these patients don't have a murmur. And the way they may find out about it is if they have a lot of swelling that needs, needs to be treated or they just feel really fatigued that's getting worse, certainly try to get an echo and find out about how the heart is functioning, how the valves are functioning. Patients that have, a, have had a pacemaker, they have a much higher chance of having a leaking tricuspid valve. So those patients should absolutely be on the lookout. Ultimately, if you see a report that your tricuspid valve is leaking, talk to your doctor about it, ask for a referral if you need. No, oh, that is great advice. And Dr. Elawadi, on behalf of the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks for the great work that you and your team are doing there at Michigan Medicine. Thanks for being here today. Pleasure. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.